wanted to know personally because uh, you know many viewers buy wine based on the points. Right. So maybe you can pick some other different points and then you taste and then see if you agree. We can. Say. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. my my view on points. Bullshit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, a lot of people like to hear this, yeah. you know? <laughs> It'll be interesting to hear it. And the point scores, and the uh -huh. reason I say that they're frequently bullshit, it depends upon who's scoring the wine, right? And so if you have a similar palate to the person scoring the wine, then those scores may, may have some validity to you. But if the person scoring the wines likes big, heavy wines and you don't, the scores are worthless. And then the other thing is that wines change, not from day to day, but a wine that you buy today and you don't drink for six months may very well be different. Right? So the wines evolve, okay. and the wines change, and their point scores change. But when I first started buying wines, I too looked at the scores. And then after a while I realized that it meant very little, and, and I stopped looking at them. Um, could you tell us about whether the people who are rating wines are objective, or do you know how they get paid, or how the industry works in that respect? Well, uh, under an ideal circumstance, right, if somebody was uh, judging uh, scoring wines, right, you would do it blind, right, so you wouldn't know what the winery oh, was, okay. and you would have some wines, and there are some publications and some uh, reviewers that do it that way, though many of them know the winery, are going to the winery and scoring the wines. But if you have a relationship with somebody, it's harder to be fully objective about score, scoring the wines. If they're providing you with flights and meals or whatever, it's more difficult to be objective. If a publication is accepting advertisements from that winery, uh, one raises the question whether or not the, the advertisement money influences what the scores are. Are you affiliated with any winery distributor? Any? Are you making money off of wine? No, I'm. I'm spending money. <laughs> I on think. Wine. Yeah, I think you're the only objective reviewer. Uh, well, uh, let me know who else out there has no interest whatsoever in any selling. You make no mo uh, money off of any sales. You've made no money so far off of any you know, videos other than your commercials. Right. right. So, so in essence, mm -hmm. the videos that we do, we are doing for education and fun mm -hmm. and some entertainment. And our videos are not infomercials that I am using to sell wine somewhere else. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's not okay. the case. And we're also using it to hopefully build a viewership that will be interested in educational... In a wine school, yeah. Wine, yeah. Like either yeah. live here or live and virtual, like if you know anyone in California who would like to start um, taking wine lessons or form a wine club and we could videotape and learn at the same time, eventually we'd like to do that. Can I ask you more questions? Yeah, more? Okay. Right ahead. So, um, just for like a guy who's dating a girl, yeah. maybe, let's say you try to impress somebody, how would you explain the, the vintage of a wine? Like one year versus over the other. Yeah. Does it matter or? It depends upon the wine. So there are all different kinds of people, right? Yeah. And so there are some people, some ladies, that are impressed. Don't have it with me. Can I borrow that? Some oh. women that are impressed by the size and the contents of your wallet. Okay. So for those people that are looking for a wallet, right? The way to impress is with the cost of the bottle of the wine that you purchase in the restaurant, right? right? Yeah. So when I have guests yeah. in general, or friends, what I do is I ask them, what kind of wine do you like, right? right. I had uh, neighbors move in next door to me at a different house 30 years ago. And uh, they came by, they had moved in, I said, come on by, uh -huh. and let's have a glass of wine. Do you drink wine? They said, yeah. So I said, well, what kind of wine do you like to drink? And they told me Zinfandel. Uh -huh. I said, I've got a wonderful Zinfandel that I'll open up. So I went in and I got a bottle of Zinfandel, right? which is a red grape and produces red wine. But you can also make a blush wine from it, 
right, so-called white Zinfandel is made from red Zinfandel grapes, and so I pour them the wine, and then they didn't drink any of it. They only had a sip, and I said, don't you like the Zinfandel? And they said, we didn't know that Zinfandel was red. We only had the pink Zinfandel. <laughs> and, so, and so I always made it a point to have some rosé wine available as well for guests to, you know, so basically giving your guests what they like and not to make a judgment on, on what they like. So, um, are you aware of like, the subscription for the wines? That you pay certain money and then they ship out whatever wine that they can mm -hmm. source from under? Yeah. Have Do you tried it? I never tried it, but I'm pretty sure there's many people who want to try it. Yeah. Do you think it's worth it? It depends upon the, the service. I'm a member of two winery clubs. I, I've been a member, I get Ridge uh, Montebello, is my one of my favorite California Cabernet Sauvignons. Mm -hmm. I get that through the winery on an automatic basis. I used to get other wines as well. I am a member at uh, William Selim, and I get a shipment of Pinot Noir and Zinfandel and Chardonnay um, okay. once a year. I think what Min is talking about is a lot of places are doing these subscriptions where they send you a bottle. It's not from a winery. Yeah, You're they not source getting it. from it, like a just... random wine producer, yeah. so right. like an unknown producer, so right. I should say. They send you like 10 bottles right. per month. And but sometimes they might be preying on people who don't know about wine to right. unload. It depends upon. Uh, uh, I know a fellow who, who's a really good guy, uh -huh. Paul, who has the uh, Wine of the Month Club. He has a very good palate and okay. selects some um, really good wines. So, so again, it depends upon who's doing it. And then to rephrase the vintage question, um, would you say, like, somebody told me about the 2014, the Chablis, it's mm -hmm. like a great. Yeah. Does it make a big difference? It does, it, though it depends upon the style of wine. So the white burgundies, okay. uh, of which Chablis is one, uh -huh. right? 2014 was a cooler vintage, and so the focus of the white burgundy and the Chablis is beautiful, and there's acid is beautiful. And so the, uh, 2014 was a fantastic year for, for white burgundy. Whereas if somebody, it all depends upon the style of wine that you like. I don't like super ripe Chardonnay. Uh -huh. uh, for people who are accustomed to super ripe Chardonnay, 2014 will not be the vintage in Burgundy for them. I 2015 see. was riper. Okay. And so those wines are more akin to some California wines. But uh, in terms of being classic Burgundy, 2014 was, was fantastic. And those w wines will live a very long period of time. Now with vintage uh, as well, is that it offers one of the few ways that we can travel in time. When you that's, think about yeah, it. That, yeah, that's, that's the beauty of the vintage wine. We can look at a movie, an older movie, or, and go back in time. We can look at old magazines and books, old photographs. But also by tasting wine from different vintages, it's a way of going back in time. My wife was born in 1992. I went to the Total Wines, try to find the wine from the year. I couldn't find it, but I hope we can find an injury for you know some our special day. Yeah, you know, it contains a year, well, whole year, you know, into the, one bottle. Yeah, you know, the, the way to do that yeah. is, I think Chances Robinson has one, Decanter has one, The Wine Spectator has one. Uh, there are vintage charts, and some of them uh, will say whether or not the wines are ready to drink. Look at 1992 and see where in the world uh, 92 was. Was a great year? Was a great year. Oh, okay. Or a good year. Okay. And then, and then from that point, then you can try to find the, find the wines online, or uh, sometimes uh, producers sell library wines. Though, uh, though even that isn't always fully reliable, because sometimes the ratings mm -hmm. are based upon how ripe the vintage is. And so for, for example, uh, 1995, I think, was a, was a cooler vintage in Napa Valley, and because of that was rated less highly. Mm -hmm. I happen to have had, had a bottle of 1995 Robert Mondavi Reserve in my cellar, and we opened it up. It was spectacular. It oh, was wow. the wine okay. to die for, right? Okay. And then when we looked online, because that vintage had been hadn't been rated as 
highly as some of the other ones that were riper. This was a beautiful wine, which was going to be more beautiful than these overripe wines from the warmer vintage. So we then went online and we bought a case of it. So again, the score doesn't matter. The score doesn't